at home amateur museum theater presents coaches trains cars planes and blimps blimps why is that a question i'll explain when we get there Hey guys, this is Anne here with another at home amateur museum theater. This week we're talking all about transportation through Jonesboro, which has been very well traveled throughout its history. Now, of course, those early transportation routes were established by the indigenous peoples who were on the land first, and then it's going to branch off from there. And the first form of transportation we're going to talk about are coaches, stage coaches, because you had a really, really big important stagecoach line that ran down Main Street, Jonesboro. Now, I don't have a really good example of a stagecoach here in my house, so we're going to let the archival photos do the talking. Knoxville Register, January 25th, 1826. New line of stages. The stage from Knoxville, Tennessee to Salem, North Carolina via Dandridge, Newport, Greenville, Leesburg, Jonesboro, Ash Courthouse, Wilkesboro, Hamptonville, Huntsville, to Salem, will leave Knoxville every Wednesday at 1 p.m. and arrive at Salem every Tuesday at 12 p.m. The stage will leave Salem every Tuesday at 1 p.m. and arrive at Knoxville every Monday at 6 p.m. Jonesboro Wig, June 24, 1840. Carriage Making McCatherin and Hill, having permanently located in Jonesboro, where they expect to carry on the above business in all its various branches, respectfully request of a generous community a liberal share of public patronage. Carriages, barouches, buggies, etc., etc., made to order with neatness and dispatch. Also, stagecoaches will be made, not inferior to any in the Western country, one of the firm having served a regular apprenticeship at the best establishments in Virginia. Wagons, or repairing in every respect, made and executed at the shortest notice. James McCatherine and Joseph Hill. Now, the stagecoach... That's a stagecoach? I told you we didn't have a good model. It's pretty much stagecoach shaped. Anyhow, the stagecoach, of course, helped transport people west in a growing country and it helped bring a lot of goods into Jonesboro from other larger northern cities. Now, great form of travel, lots of big drawbacks. Uh, stagecoaches were pretty crowded. You'd have multiple people and eyeballs and rats um, all on a stagecoach. Uh, kind of shove people in wherever. Just gonna keep uh, shoving passengers in here. And you had all their stuff. So you'd have lots of trunks on the stagecoach too. It's gonna take a lot of time. You had multiple stops. And then you also had to watch out for bandits. Look out, travelers. We learn from the Jonesboro Sentinel that a trunk was stolen from the boot of the Bluntful and Abaddon stage on the night of the 13th, containing about $200 in specie, besides various articles of clothing and some valuable papers. The trunk belonged to Mr. G. W. Piper of Jonesboro and has since been found in a field near Bluntville, rifled of its contents. The Sentinel says that a similar robbery occurred near Bean Station, Granger County, a short time since. It behooves travelers on the eastern route to have a sharp eye to their luggage and the stage drivers along the line to take a greater precaution than hitherto-fore. Now, the railroad got to Jonesboro in 1857, 1858, and it was a long, hard fight to get it here, and that's a whole other video by itself. Now, a lot of the information that we have for this video actually comes from this book, Humor, Rumor, and Romance in Old Jonesboro by Miriam Fink Delaney. And this is an account of when the first train came through Jonesboro in 1857. That's not the right kind of train. I know it's not the right kind of train. I don't have a cool steam engine model. I just have a diesel. <laughs> Him. The first train came through Jonesboro in 1857. 
According to the recollections of Mrs. Peter Miller, people from miles around were on hand for the event. They pressed close to the track for the first glimpse of the great iron horse. With a hissing of steam and clanging of metal, the engine rushed toward them at the breathtaking speed of 15 miles per hour. Slow down! As it drew Neil near, the whistle blew its salutation. <laughs> Pandemonium reigned supreme among the watchers. Some fled from the sight of the terrifying metal beast and in their flight, some of them fell headlong into the town creek. Now the train was faster than the stagecoach, but you still had a lot of stops and you still had to operate on someone else's timetable. So wouldn't it be great if there was some form of transportation where you could just work on your own time? Wait, enter the automobile. Now, of course, this new sleek form of transportation came with its own restrictions. From Town Marshal W.E. Shaw. The fact that a great many of the automobile owners and drivers, especially those living out of town, did not know that the speed limit anywhere in the corporation was 10 miles per hour, and that no cutouts were allowed, and that all lights on the car must be displayed after dark, we have excused a few for this reason. We have now our signs displayed on every road and street leading to the corporation, and from an after this date, August 26, 1919, no one will be excused, and no fine for less than $5 in cost will be assessed for any violation, and it may be increased to $50 in cost. We are not responsible for deficient lights or brakes. We give this as final notice, not that the corporation wants your money, but that the ordinances must be obeyed by all. With car purchased from Charles Motor Company, Beard wins $200. P.C. Phillips wins fourth prize. Hobart M. Beard of Boone's Creek drove a Ford Touring car 53 miles on one gallon of gasoline. This feat was performed last Saturday in the Ford Marathon, which was featured by the Ford dealers of this section. There were 20 cars in the contest, and the first prize of $200 went to Beard, who won by about five miles over his nearest competitor. The cars were entered at the post office building at Johnson City, where they were numbered, given one gallon of gasoline, and the tank sealed. The route led over the Memphis to Bristol Highway, via Jonesboro and the Greene County Line, then back. Beer made the round trip and stopped two miles below Jonesboro on the second trip. Second prize went to C.W. Earhart of Bristol, who was driving a Ford Roadster. All the cars entered were the 1926 model. In the mid-1930s, Johnson City's airfield and Kingsport's airstrip were deemed not practical for expansion. Bristol, Johnson City, and Kingsport cooperated with Sullivan County to build an airport on 323 acres in Sullivan County between the three cities. In September 1937, two small runways, a terminal building, an aircraft hangar had been built, and the airport saw its first airliner, an American Airlines DC-2. On November 5, 1937, McKellar Field, now known as Tri-Cities Airport, Tennessee, Virginia, was dedicated by Senator Kenneth McKellar. We've talked about coaches, trains, autos, planes, but what about blimps? airships, dirigibles, zeppelins. What about those? Wait, what's this? Breaking news. We go live now to the scene of the worst blimp disaster in Jonesboro's history. Oh my gosh, is that the Goodyear blimp stuck to the steeple of the Baptist Church? I'm pretty sure that's a blimp-shaped balloon. Oh. Well, that makes more sense. This archival photo shows a blimp-shaped balloon that broke free of its moorings and snagged the steeple of the Baptist Church. The caption says it was a Goodyear advertising blimp and the incident happened in 1966. We posted this photo on Facebook and there was some discussion about the specifics. 
One local remembered it as a balloon for the 25th anniversary of Exxon Station in 1969. When the balloon got stuck, they tried to shoot it down, but it hung on until the wind took it elsewhere. Another local remembered a blimp-shaped balloon that broke free from a Johnson City car dealership in the 1950s and made it all the way to Mountain City. Apparently, there was a rash of tiny dirigible disasters in the 1950s and 1960s. Well, that's it for this edition of At Home Amateur Museum Theater. We hope you learned a little bit about transportation in Jonesboro. And remember, however you get from here to there, make sure you stay safe. You know, babe, the Victorian era really had me convinced that we'd be traveling around in just big old Zeppelins by now. Nothing but Zeppelins. Well, maybe in the future. Yeah, maybe in the future.